If you missed the news, Elon Musk just solved the global water crisis. The potential for solving any given water issue is extremely good because there is so much water. When I talk to even very well-read, very, very smart people, they will often think the water crisis is unsolvable. But in fact, it is very solvable. There's obviously desalination required at times, but desalination, as I think most people know, has become very inexpensive. The availability of fresh water is simply about energy, and transport. We need to desalinate more water and use solar energy to power that effort. Before you laugh, scream or rage, I'll tell you I agree with the Incredible Hulk on that one. I see this as an absolute win. Clearly Elon's solution is not even half-baked. But the richest man on earth was speaking at the World Water Forum in Bali and had you told me that just two weeks ago I simply would not have believed it as he's known to, well, react like that uh, when asked about water scarcity <laughs> this region has so much water <laughs> look around you but the local water supply <laughs> says there's no more water for further development stages no no this is completely wrong it's like water everywhere here does this seem like a desert to you <laughs> so here's the absolute win elon musk has entered the chat when it comes to water and the more people are in this discussion the better is desalination the answer to the global water crisis no, not even close, but it still is an important brick in the wall, so one that's worth optimizing. Now, if Elon is getting serious about desalination, I'd recommend him to take his Cybertruck and drive some 300 miles north from his Boca Chica house in Texas up to Houston. Why Houston? Well, because that's where Tom Pankratz lives. Tom defines himself as a veteran de soldier. He's forgotten more about desalination than a muggle like me will ever learn. He's the editor of the Water Desalination Report. And he's not my guest this week. So why am I referring to Tom? Well, because every year at the Global Water Summit, Tom picks cool companies in the desalination tech sphere and invites them to a session called Tech Idol. And with former winners such as Gradient, one could say... He's got a sense of what's a hot play in this industry. By the way, Gradient won again this year through their Aquacritox arm, but that's a story for another day. So finally to my point. Last year's Tech Idol was a bit of a 2003 NBA draft. Lots of talents, great companies like the one that won, Ariane Edelet's Active Membranes, who you saw alongside Bjorn and me in a water show, the People's Choices Awards that went to Greg Newblom's Mem Brian, a great guest in season 8 of this podcast, and somewhat flying under the radar, Salinity Solutions, presented by founder and CTO Tim Norton. I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, high efficiency, high recovery, reversal osmosis, specifically batch reverse osmosis. This batch reverse osmosis Tim just alluded to is what Salinity Solutions defines as next generation reverse osmosis and in turn the pitch triggered a bunch of engaged questions from the jury which is good because it trained Tim from my own rapid fire later today. What problem did you have to solve from going semi-batch to batch? It looks like half a wheel with a different control philosophy. What's the difference? It's cost effective to do that rather than use a more conventional system for the low pressure and then take the brine and yeah, take absolutely. That. Now, 2023 Salinity Solutions was interesting, but the rocket was still being assembled. So we're looking to partner with the companies and help us execute on that. We've got our field trials going and of course we're raising our Series A. So I placed Tim's endeavors on my watch list, waiting for the right time to present them to you. Within 12 months, a lot has changed. First, Salinity Solutions closed its Series A with SQM Lithium Ventures as a lead investor. And second, while I was recording some interviews at the 2024 Global Water Summit, I got told that someone needed a backdrop to sign a contract. That someone was Suez signing a contract with Salinity Solutions to pilot their technology in a wastewater reuse project to compare it with conventional reverse osmosis on energy while assessing its capacity to remove micropollutants, heavy metals, and PFAS. As we later discuss with Tim, that contract being a firm sales to a commercial operator, I guess it qualifies Salinity Solutions as a TRL9 company who is now market ready to provide better RO. So I took the road to Birmingham and here's the full story. Reverse osmosis has been utilized for decades, but there's quite a lot of inefficiencies with conventional RO, and particularly if you want to get to a high recovery of water on the inlet to an RO, you'd have just a high pressure pump 
one membrane, which is here, providing the cross flow, and then a throttle valve on the other end. The process become really, really inefficient. If you want to increase the recovery as well, they become enormous because the brine from one system goes into the next and goes into the next. If you can afford a large, somewhat less efficient RO system where scale effects compensate for the inefficiencies through energy recovery loops and side processes, or if you don't care about the water and energy efficiency of your system for a set of context reasons, then you're probably not that bothered about what Tim explained so far. But Salinity Solutions started developing its system with a very specific target in mind. When we started the research for the technology. We were targeting remote communities, water scarce parts of the world. It's where this technology can have a really big impact. The initial team that started the research was really motivated through humanitarian aid and the efficiency of this technology enables you to couple it with solar panels without them having to be enormous. If you look at the average water consumption of a person living in Subasar in Africa per day for the showering, drinking, everything like that, then this is capable of providing water for 800 people. So, how does it work? The feed water comes in here, and then it comes into the back of this uh, pressure vessel where there's a piston in here. The fluid then doesn't mix with the solution. We have a batch of water on this side of the piston that's recirculated out of the pressure exchanger into the membrane, back out of the membrane into the exchanger again. As the fresh water is produced, volume here reduces so the piston moves up and as the piston travels the salts and the minerals are all concentrating within the recirculation loop so the pressure is rising in the system and when the piston gets to the end here we open this valve we open this valve and we purge all of the brine from the membrane we use this pump to reset the pressure exchanger and then we start the process again the membrane we use uh, any membranes our innovation is a process innovation it's how we recirculate the water around the membrane that's specific so we're not tied to one membrane supplier we use all sorts dow film tech lg torre you name it we've tried it the system cycles through stages of operation most membrane processes are continuous so they're in the equilibrium all the time so they stay at one pressure, whereas this, it cycles through the operation. So the control changes the orientation of the valves at different phases, and it allows us to operate the pump so we can move the piston up and down. There's a huge amount of know-how within the control. That's really our secret source of what we do, because the orientation of the valves and the speed of the pumps, that's clever stuff. But how you how it's evolved and all the IP that's in there, that's really what allows us to provide the performance. Our IP is in these three valves that control the system here and two pumps that operate it. So this is where the first patent was. The first set of IP was in these three valves, these green boxes here. The initial patent was generated by Philip Davies, who's a professor of water technology at the University of Birmingham. We've now got another three patents that have come through on optimizing the process and increasing the efficiency in a few different ways. It's a smart process. It gives us all the triggers that are required to know the membrane health and when maintenance is required on the system. We are integrating the system with machine learning, but right now our focus is on getting this out into the field and proving the efficacy of this technology. The brain's local to the system, so the brain's in here. It's all encrypted within there. We can log into the system remotely and check on the system's health and diagnose how the system's performing. This was our first pilot system to get it out into the field and uh, show proof of concept, the efficacy. So this is the scale of system that we use for trial whenever we go to a customer site. So what's the secret? What makes that system special? The efficiency is because of our pressure exchanger in here. And this makes the salts concentrate on the membrane in an exponential pattern which massively reduces the average pressure. If you want to make a conventional RO efficient you have to have lots and lots of stages of operation you have to have a booster pump between each stage and an energy recovery device on the back so the systems have to be massive and we can beat their efficiency significantly in a single step of operation and we can achieve 98 percent water recovery with this technology 50 times reduction in the feed volume and we're looking at half the energy consumption of the conventional RO. That's Salinity Solutions USP, or one of the USPs, as we'll discuss with Tim later. They're really stepping up the game as soon as you're going to very high-end water recoveries, as they can reach them first, 
and it's not a given, but also because they can do so at consequently lower energy consumption rates. That's what's taken them into the unconventional water applications first. This has been up and down the country on multiple different sites. We've done a recent trial with a vertical farming company in Kent. They're pushing themselves towards zero liquid discharge because of uh, obviously the water stress in Kent and they're a very environmentally friendly company. That's Grow Up Farms. We uh, hit 98% water recovery with them in the field consistently. Then we've done Cornish Lithium. So we did the trial with them where we're concentrating the lithium brines before the DLE. Lithium. Interesting. Remember that Series A I mentioned? Well, if you're not familiar with the lithium word, Salinity Solutions Investor, SQM, is the second largest lithium company in the world. So that kind of gives you a hint at one of the verticals team will be developing. We did our first trial with Cornish Lithium that was back in 2021, but our horizons were somewhat shifted since then. So we've gone from playing with uh, lithium in our backyard. We're now playing with lithium in the lithium triangle with uh, some of the major lithium providers. So our most recent shareholder is SQM. And I can't speak too much about it, but we've got some really exciting development coming through with SQM where we're trying different membranes that are going to enable their process. But there's um, quite a few different places where this process fits within the lithium chain. So there's separation phase, there's a concentration phase, and then there's also a post uh, DLE concentration phase where it's applied. Our areas of focus at the moment are zero liquid discharge mineral extraction and water reuse. That's where we're delivering this technology initially because that's where we see it having the biggest impact. So basically you're competing with a crystallizer or an evaporator? We're kind of competing with the crystallizer but we're adding a lot of benefit to the crystallizer because at the moment you have to evaporate all the solution which is really energy intensive. What we do is we concentrate before it goes into the evaporator so we reduce the demand on the evaporator. And that's what we're doing in India. So we're partnering with an evaporation company. The evaporators are hundreds of times more energy intensive than this membrane process. Any even small reduction in the evaporation demand is a massive reduction in energy consumption. The MOU we just signed with Suez is on municipal water reuse. Because it's so water stressed in France, it's really important for them to recover as much water as possible. Talking of Suez, I wasn't the only visitor that day in Birmingham two massive arrow modules were there as well to get prepared for deployment on the Suez project. So this, it's a 16-inch piston that will go in here. And this is the first time we've used a 16-inch piston. So in this room, we're building an accelerated life cycle test rig. So we're going to fire the piston up and down this pressure exchanger for, we're going to get more than six years worth of cycles out of it in a few months of operation. And as soon as we're complete with that, then we're confident that this has got the engineering integrity to deploy it in the field. Beyond the size between that mm -hmm. and that, yep. what are the other differences? With this technology, we're taking it up to 100 meters cubed a day from 25 meters cubed a day. In here, we've got one membrane, one eight inch reverse osmosis membrane. The next one's going to have six with uh, two membranes in parallel. We're upscaling the pipe work to make sure the hydraulics are better or more efficient for that scale of operation. But apart from that, the core of our IP doesn't really change. One of the beauties of our IP is it works in a modular solution so we can upscale it and keep the core pretty much the same. We're upscaling now to 100 meters cubed a day. The next one's 500 and the next one after that's 1,000 meters cubed a day. The uh, work we're doing with Suez, we're scaling the technology up much further than that. SQM, Suez, ZLD Ninja and more. I know I keep teasing, but there's so much to learn in my full conversation with Tim. All of that to build what? The ambition for Salinity is to get the technology out there into the field as quickly as possible. We know that this technology can have a big impact on the marketplace and not just the marketplace, on human life and helps to tackle climate change. The best way for us to do that was to work with the companies that have the customer base that's there already. Because if we're going to build a business that manufactures this technology ourselves, it's going to cost us 50 million more pounds it's going to take another 20 years and there's so many more risks involved we are looking to partner and license the technology okay. how did salinity solutions get there what's to learn from their path that you can emulate what are the brilliant tricks that turn a british startup with a crowdfunding and a relatively small series a into a tech that sells itself inbound and attracts the largest players in the game we'll discover that and much more in the full conversation with tim check it out and I'll meet you there. There's no place where reverse osmosis is used that this technology can't be applied. 98% water recovery, half the energy consumption and reduced chemicals. All of our sales for the last two years 
have been inbound quite unconventionally and I'd recommend it to any tech startup. We went crowdfunding. We've got three main pillars of the business that we're working in. What you need is the champion within the organization that picks it up and runs with it and says, no, we need to do this. They're not the only giants we're working with. They're the only giants we're public with. We don't think we're going to need to raise again because everything that we've done has been fully funded.